Hey, we've got here another integral from the MIT integration B. We've got something from 2011. We have an integral from zero to pi, cos x, cos 3x, cos 5x, dx. So earlier I did this on paper, and what I did was I just used the different angle formula. Doing this with the different angle formula was actually kind of long, not super long, but you know, maybe it took me five minutes. But I could see at the end that really what they're looking for is a much shorter solution. Let me know in the comments if you had an easier or quicker way than what I come up with, but let's see what I did. So I started with a u substitution, and what I did was u equals pi over two minus x. The reason I did that is because it's gonna allow us to use the complementary angle formula and set this up pretty nice. So with this, we can just rearrange and we can also get a value for x. So x is gonna be pi over two minus u, and we'll just get our dx value, which is gonna be minus du. And then we'll make this substitution. So first, okay, we plug pi in here. We're gonna have a minus pi over two. We plug a zero and we're gonna have pi over two. Okay, then for our first cosine, we're gonna have cosine pi over two minus u. Then it's just gonna be very similar, but we're gonna be multiplying by three and five. So we're gonna have three pi over two minus three u cosine five pi over two minus 5u, and then we're gonna have a minus du here. And what I wanna do with this minus, let's just use this to flip the bounds. What we can do is take that away, change this to a plus, change this to a minus, just flipping these. And then also, this is actually exactly the complementary angle formula right here. So this is the same thing as sine of u. Now for these other two, what I'm gonna do is use the angle difference formula, but we're gonna take a little shortcut. But let me just show you that formula before we apply it. Okay, so we have this formula down here boxed in red that we're gonna use. And when I said there's a shortcut, what I wanna notice is just imagine if we're plugging in, so our, our a value, like here our a value is three pi over two, and this is our b value, not with the minus sign, just the three u. And then here it's gonna be five pi over two, and, and five u will be our b. The thing I wanna notice though, when we do this, for our cosine of a value, so cosine of three pi over two, this is equal to zero. And the same thing here, cosine of five pi over two is also equal to zero. So with those two zero values, when we apply this formula both times, this piece here is going to zero. So we can, just in this case, right, with this angle, we're gonna just ignore this first part and just look for sine A, sine B. So then when I rewrite this, I'm just gonna rewrite these terms as sine A and sine B. So let's see how that's gonna look. Okay, so now with the rewrite, you notice we don't have any cosine terms anymore, right? Because they all went to zero, and this one got changed with the complementary angle formula. So we've got all sine terms. And then keep in mind, these are just gonna be, these are just constants. This is just gonna be numbers, like sine three pi over two, this is just minus one. Sine at five pi over two is just one. So we don't have to worry about this one. And this minus one, we can take out front of the integral, okay, and just cross that one off. So then just to make this real clear, we're just left with these three sine functions. Let's just kind of clean it a little bit. So all we have left is sine u, sine 3u, sine 5u. And now we're actually pretty close because we've got this symmetrical bound and we can finish it off. So let's just look at one more property. Okay, so what I wanna do is just use this nice property of an odd function. Then we've got an odd function and we're symmetrical around zero like this, a to minus a, or minus a to a, the whole integral is zero. So really all we need to do is show that this whole thing is an odd function. Now we know that each of these, okay, we know in a sine function, we know this is odd, and this is odd, and this is odd. The only thing we have to know is when we're multiplying odd functions. Now if we just had two functions, if you multiply an odd times an odd, it's even, but odd times odd times odd is odd. The way, the way I remember this is like, I look at it like I'm multiplying, like just say if you're multiplying minus one, if I'm multiplying minus one times minus one, I get back a one, we consider that even, not as not an even number, but if we multiply minus one, minus one times minus one, we get a negative, that's an odd function. So since this whole thing is odd, then this whole integral is going to zero. And so our solution for this is just gonna be zero. That's it, thought it was a great problem today. So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone. Please subscribe, have a great day.